Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to paint the new Necron Psychomancer. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how to paint your Warhammer models, learn cool tips and tricks and everything else painting related, then please consider subscribing and hit that bell so you're notified of all new videos. Okay, here we go with this uh, Necron Psychomancer. So I'm going to paint him in the style of the Sarakan Dynasty, which is the uh, the box art, basically. So we're going to start off with some Balthazar gold. Uh, and what I'm looking to do is paint uh, all the kind of parts of the body. Now, I've primed this with lead belcher, because it just saves trying to get into all these little nooks and crannies uh, with the silver. The other thing I've done as well is I've already based him. Uh, and the reason for that is because... These Necrons are much too fiddly for my chunky fingers and these little tendrils uh, were quite a quite a job to put on and so uh, the base is doing a little bit of work in terms of sticking up and, uh, and helping secure this uh, this guy to the base. So in terms of adding this Balthazar gold, just working our way uh, around. Check the box art if you're not sure but it should cover in just one coat uh, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, wash it next. Once you've got that Balthazar gold down, we can uh, shade the silver and the gold with uh, some Nuln oil. Now, leave that back carapace because we're going to do that a lighter colour. Uh, but everything else, all the silver, all the gold, we're going to just shade with some Nuln oil. So just work it around the model. Don't let it settle too much uh, on the armour plates like, like I have there. Just want to wick that away. So just get it in there. And again, not too much for you to see with me doing this. So uh, I'll go ahead and finish it. Like I said, make sure it doesn't pool too badly. Uh, get all the silver. These tendrils, let it dry. And then you may want to give it another uh, another coat of null oil. Because looking at the box art, they're, they're a little darker uh, than some of the other areas of silver. So that's uh, I'd say that's painter's choice based on how this first bit goes. So get that done. And then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll do the other kind of the lighter metals next. Once that null oil is dry, we'll do those kind of lighter metals now. And the colour I'm going to use for that is uh, one of those newer paints, the Canoptec Alloy, which is a layer paint and it's obviously very light. So you may need a couple of coats just to to work it on. And there's a few areas that we're focusing on. So we've got the kind of the carapace here. Uh, we've also got the blade or the decoration around here. So my brush has just split off. So I'm using a synthetic brush here for the for the metals just means I save my uh, my good Windsor and Newton brushes for uh, some of the other or some of the more uh, natural paints that haven't got these metal flakes in um, so just work your way around the model have a look at the box art uh, to see where these lighter kind of canoptic alloy colors are there's quite a few of them around uh, the model you've got them on the bottom of the sharp blades for example a few areas here on the the wrist so get all that done and we'll come back and shade it next to shade that canoptic alloy i'm going to use some agrax earth shade now i'm not going to just cover everything like i did with the null oil for that uh, for that first uh, shade what i'm going to try and do in the main is just drop it into the recesses along the model and you can see there the surface tension just kind of pulls it where I want it to go. Uh, if it is a massive spillage, then I can clean it up after. Um, but just pick up all those little dings and dinks. I just want to move it around there. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So just go around all the little bits that you've done with uh, with the Canoptic Alloy. And then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll start highlighting these metals a little bit. Next up, I want to highlight uh, the metal. So the first colour we're going to use is some Sycorax bronze or Sycorax bronze, and this is just for the the um, the gold colours. And we're just looking to catch some of those those edges. Apologies if you can hear the wind blowing in the background; it's uh, pretty crazy here uh, at the moment. So where I can, I just want to catch the kind of the sharper edges and the design of the model just to 
make the highlighting process a little bit easier really uh, so work your way around all the baths are gold and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the the other metals next to highlight the silver and the canoptech alloy we're going to use chrome from Vallejo Modbear again not thin down at all it's thin enough it's designed to go through uh, through an airbrush so you know we're, ha we're happy in terms of the thickness uh, and what we're looking to do really is we're looking to catch the edges of the model so you can get a nice kind of easy sharp highlight like that um, and we're just working our way around like I said catching all those those raised areas a little bit there on the Necron symbol and then we've got for the tendrils I yeah, you can do as much or as little as you want with this because if you want it to be nice and highlighted then carry on but it, you, you may end up spending quite a bit of your time looking to highlight uh, these bits so uh, for me I'm just kind of picking up the the, the kind of the biggest parts which might catch the light. Uh, the other thing I want to pay a little bit of attention to as well is things like the, the chin coming down here because what we're going to do is we're going to use some contrast paints to um, to colour these and things like that. this little kind of crystal in there as well. So using the uh, the highlight from the silver uh, and a little bit, I'll make sure you can see that and it's focused just a little bit along the along the kind of the devices as well that he's kind of got on his, on his one arm because what we're going to do like I said is we can use a contrast paint so when we put the the kind of bright metallic underneath and again I'm just kind of stippling like that it'll kind of show through and really help with the uh, with the effect so just work your way around highlight all the canoptic alloy and all the silver with this chrome uh, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll make a start on some of the uh, some of those areas I was just talking about the first area I want to focus on with uh, the kind of the contrast paint uh, is going to be the crystal, this kind of little piece on the wrist here, and also the, uh, we'll call it a beard. So the colour I'm going to use for that is a Kelly and Green contrast paint. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it neat, straight from the pot, just over both of those, or all of those elements. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to put just a, a thin second coat on just to reinforce the darkness uh, in the shadows. And you can see there just on that piece where by you've put that chrome metallic in it, it's kind of automatically giving you that highlight. So work around all those areas with the Achillean green, let it dry. And then we'll come back and we'll start to, to base up the black on the handle uh, of the weapon. And then we'll do the white. Next up, we're going to take some Abaddon Black and we're just going to use this to base the staff. So nice and simple. Just be careful when you get to those areas you've already finished. Work your way around. You don't need to show you too much of this. Like I said, just take your time. Uh, if there's any wires you can find on the model as well, I think there's one in the kind of the gut area. So get that painted as well. Uh, and the other thing to do, which will be a little difficult for me to show you on cam, but I'll make a start on it. It's just this little block in here. There's also one on the chest as well, which we want to paint black, but we want to make sure that we leave the uh, the symbol unpainted. So get that done, and uh, we'll come back and highlight it next. To highlight up the black, we'll use some Mechanica Standard Grey. Um, just get a good tip on your brush. And then what we're looking for is where we've got those areas that the we've got those kind of little indentations. We're just looking to catch a little highlight along there. And then what you can also do is you can probably see there. You can see where the the highlight is um, is running along the the staff. Just make sure wipe your brush and some tissue paper before you kind of go back to the model and you can just pull it up there in line with the the way the light is reflecting so just work your way around the model and do that on all the kind of little black bits uh, and then we'll come back and base all the white next once the black highlights finished we'll base up 
uh, a lot of the model ready for the next step. So the colour we're going to use for this is uh, Corax White. So I've thinned mine down quite a bit because it's quite thick paint anyway. Uh, and what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to paint the skull and all the kind of uh, bits associated with it. Got the jaw there and all these kind of little blocks just leaving the, the silver there. So we've got all the skull. Uh, I'm also going to paint the, the kind of the blade here. I'm just doing this really quick to show you. It's going to need uh, maybe two coats, um, possibly three. We've got the skull as well, so just be careful on the skull not to go over any of the bits we've uh, we've already finished. Make sure you get that orb done as well. Uh, and then we've obviously got this big orb on the back. You can see there the paint, the water is kind of just pulling away a little from the... Um, from the metallic underneath so we just need to deal with that as best we can put a nice thin layer on and then we'll go back in when it's dry and we should be able to build it up uh, and then there's lots of little orbs uh, around the body as well so you know things like this little one in there that we want to get covered in the corax white as well so just work your way around get that done like i said it may take you uh, two coats possibly three um and then once it's all done, we'll come back. Uh, we'll start to add some uh, some nice accent colours to it. Uh, and we'll do the skull last. It's quite a bit of white on the model now. So what we want to look at doing potentially is we'll get those, those orbs done first. So the colour I'm using for that is Tesseract Glow. That was a bit of a mouthful I wasn't expecting. And all we're doing is just painting it over uh, where we've got these orbs. Work it into those recesses there, nice and straightforward. Make sure we cover everything. So there we are. Just work around all the orbs with that test rack glow. Get it in there, and we'll come back and we'll focus on the head next. I think to shade the head, we're just looking for a, a very small amount of uh, apothecary white. So I've not got too much on my brush, and I'm just painting that into those kind of recesses, and then when that dries. It should uh, should give us a nice effect. So get that done, let it dry, uh, and then we'll come in and highlight it a bit next. To highlight the face, once that apothecary white is dry, it's going to take a little bit of white scar. Now, my white scar is very thin, so I've not thinned it down at all. I'm just going to catch those kind of sharpest raised edges there. And painting the teeth on the head so that kind of gives you a nice uh, a nice brighter white there now the other thing I want to do as well I'm gonna just take on a slightly bigger brush for this whilst I've got the white scar on the palette is I just want to roughly paint down on the skull like that because what it'll do it'll just give me a, a little bit of a brighter effect on some of the colors so I'm just moving it around, make sure it's still focused there. So just painting it down like that, nice and straightforward. So that when it comes to doing uh, the skull before long, we're going to have some some sort of darker white bits in there already. Okay. Next up, we'll base the blade, um, and we're going to use moot green for this. So even though this is going on over a uh, a white undercoat you may find that you need to do two coats so nice and simple with this make sure you get all the bits done like I said I can see straight away this is going to need a couple of coats so let it dry to the second coat and we'll come back and uh, we'll work that blade next so let's move on to the the blade and then you can see I've already kind of done the pattern on it that I'm going to show you how to do. So essentially this bit is about showing you how I got to that place. So I've got the palette up as well um, just to show you how, how very little paint I'm actually using. So this is contrast paint, this warp lightning. Like I said, I've got very hardly anything on my brush there. What I'm then doing is I'm just wiping it on a, a paper towel and then I'm just following the kind of 
design or design is the wrong word pattern and basically I'm I'm painting it to where I want the paint to be darkest because where I finish my brush stroke is where the paint will be the darkest there so what I need to do is I need to let that dry and then I need to give it another layer but instead of painting it all the way over, just kind of paint that bottom half. So for me, that bottom part looks a little dry. So I can do the same thing. Take a little bit, wipe it on a paper towel. And just build that green colour up. So that we get the kind of the, the darker green there. And if you make a mistake, don't worry. You can just take some of this moot green here. And then if that blend isn't very good, you can just paint away from it. And that'll kind of blend the green in. Now, one thing I will say is be careful about the orbs. I've just messed up and I've put green paint on the orb. So I'm going to redo the orb uh, once I finish this section. But come back. I'll darken that maybe with another shade. And then I'll just put another darker colour in the corner. Once we're happy that's all dry, the next colour we're going to use is Dark Angel's Green Contrast Paint. And you can see again, hardly any on the brush. And I'm also going to wipe it off again. And what we're looking to do with this is just kind of work this into those darkest areas again moving the brush to where we want the the darkest color to be so just work your way around let that dry and then maybe put a second one in I'm gonna just I'm gonna redo these orbs exactly the same way uh, that I did the other ones and the other thing to do when you've got that dark angels green again take a little on the brush and just work there's a kind of a kind of a recessed bit there around the orb just pop the dark angels green in there so let that all dry i'm going to come back now uh, we'll highlight it up i'll show you how to do that then i'm going to go back and fix the orbs so the color i'm going to use to highlight is ghost blaster green now this is a really strange paint for me in terms of its thickness it's very thick and doesn't come off the brush uh, particularly smooth but what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch those edges by just pulling the brush along them and then you can see straight away we're starting to get some separation uh, and then we've got the the areas here so excuse my hands getting uh, getting involved uh, but essentially you're just looking for that raised area just to pull that line down same in here now you can try and catch that edge uh, and if you're not happy with it you can obviously go back in and uh, repair it but that's okay so i'm just going to go in i'm going to do the inner highlights i'm going to repair the orbs that's the blade done so next up we're going to have a look at this skull okay let's talk about this skull so it kind of goes from a purple into a blue into a lighter blue and there's some different colors going on there so what i'm going to do is I'm going to use some contrast paint for this. Now, I'm going to go quite quick, so make sure you've got the pots open ready if you're going to follow along. Watch it once first, and if you want to try it, then um, watch it first, then then give it a go. So this uh, Shish Purple and Akelian Green are the contrast paints, and I'm going to use I'm going to use one brush to put them on, and then I've got a clean brush to help the kind of the blend. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you. On this part of the skull here uh, rather than the whole thing so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some sheerish purple and again there's no thinning this contrast paint down um, just be careful of catching it and letting it spray uh, into too many places then I'm going to clean my brush off I'm going to go into the Achillean green and I'm going to start kind of over here a little bit and I'm just going to paint that over the shish purple and what will happen is as that dries it'll um, it'll blend together now taking my clean brush I'm just going to soak up some of the excess Kelly and green I'm going to clean the brush off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this out a little bit clean my brush again and then just keep pulling it out like that and you can see what's happening now you can see it's starting to get a little thinner um, and it's good make sure you've got some good uh, paper towels as well to just take the excess water off the brush so you can see that that's actually uh, 
kind of gone quite well. Uh, now we will be doing a little bit more work on that uh, in terms of the colour and the highlighting, but I'm just going to go off and finish off camera the rest of the um, the purple and the blue. So that skull is in the process of drying. You can see underneath here that actually those, those parts are not dry at all. Uh, and that's fine because what I just want to do is I just want to kind of focus on the front bit. Now that white scar that I've got is pretty thin anyway. It's the same white scar I put on the wet palette earlier. If you have run out, just, just add some more. And what we're looking to do is we're just looking to highlight some of the features on this on the skull. Now there will be parts that are kind of still wet that if you catch, but that's okay because what this is doing is just kind of helping us build a really thin layer over uh, the kind of the contrast paint we've put down. Just helping us kind of put these kind of skull or put the skull shape uh, into some perspective. So just work your way around that, do as much or as, as little as you want and let it dry and if you feel you need to go in and add some more then you can but we're getting in there with that effect now and for me it's pretty pretty cool uh, and it's kind of like a nice really easy glowy skull effect that we've got there so um, we're probably pretty much getting there pretty much done so let that dry if you want to go in and sharpen it up I'm going to go in and sharpen up some of those highlights and we've probably just got one more step just to put some glow onto it uh, and then we're done I'm really happy with how that uh, that's turned out. So the last thing I'm going to do, just inside those eyes, I'm just going to take some Tesseract Glow, very little amount on my brush. I'm just going to paint it in there, kind of like around those eye sockets. I'll run it up towards the nose a little bit. And again, just adds to that overall effect. If, if that's too much for you, it's too strong, they can just pop some white scar uh, in there. However, this Psychomancer from my mind is done. So we'll have a look at him on the turntable next. So there we have it. This Psychomancer is done and he's ready to terrify the tabletop. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the content of the channel and make sure that I'm producing videos that you guys want to see. If you would like to support me, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, a monthly live frequently asked questions show exclusive to Patreons, as well as some giveaways and exclusive content. There's also the link for Goblin Gaming, where you can get up to 20% of all your wargaming needs if you're based in the UK or the EU. And there's also my Amazon recommended equipment list. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.